having a good day today we want to design base so we're just going to talk about the most important things that happen when you're designing a base so i'm just looking for a point where to start explaining okay this is here what we want to design uh, is a base the one that you saw right at the start okay for us to do that we need to find out that what is the 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 design load divided by the area that is uh, the area where the base is uh, the okay the area at the bottom of the base okay now uh, once we do that we come up with a with the pressure that pressure has to be less than the one that the structure can carry which is called the bearing capacity of the soil now what we use for this one is usually we use what is called a limited uh, uh, to, to do this check we need serviceability limit state this is when we use 0 0.1 of the gk and the qk okay now when we are calculating for the pressure that is going to come from the bottom there we are going to use a uh, ultimate limit state which is 1.4 gk times 1.6 qk okay so what we are designing is a pad here now the first thing that we we need to do is to look for an example i think this one is a, is a good example for us to start okay now what we need to do here is uh we have uh, a column that is uh 0.4 meters it's a square column okay it is carrying this much load and it is carrying uh this much uh, this much uh, life load okay now it we have a soil bearing capacity of this much now the uh, the thing is uh these forces are going to act on top here they're going to affect this part then this if this the pressure is uh, it exceeds this value at this point this is going to sink and the structure is going to fail now how do you ensure that the first check is okay okay the first thing we need to do let me just do this we need to assume a force for this thing here yeah. we know that concrete is a, a density of 24 now okay now what we need to do is uh we need to assume a depth here let's assume 0.5 then let's assume that okay let me just do this 24 multiplied by 8.5 meters which is the depth then uh, we want to multiply that one by let's say 2,9 multiplied by 2,9 okay we'll come up with a within uh, with an assumed load here of about 100 so the load that we are going to come up with we are going to add this assumption which is about a hundred kilonewtons this is just an assumption it could be wrong it could be right we have to see as we go through the example okay now we have this one which is 1050 we're going to add this one uh, with the dead load which we have which is about a hundred then we are going to add the life load which is about 300 okay so we've got 1450 this is the four this is the the, the the force that is coming from the column here okay so if we have 1450 we want to divide okay let me just uh, let me just use a square root like this okay here we have a force of 1450 like that then uh, from that force we need to come up with an area so the soil bearing capacity is a 160 which is uh, this one if we divide this to we come up with an area the area for the base so by looking for the square root we are actually assuming that this one is going to be a square so it's not going to be a big problem let's find out how much it's going to be it's going to be 2.9 okay for the sake of um, errors and all that stuff it will be a safe bet to uh, to use a uh, three three meters uh, for the sides of the for the from here to here okay so if we are going to use that much now we want to calculate um we want to calculate the moment okay let me just move along here 
and see what they've done assuming that the footing is a weight of this one okay this one is a bit more than what i was assuming okay so they added that to the dead load and came up with this dead load now they calculated for the serviceability load which is the one one gk multiply in other words you are not going to add any partial safety factor so you're going to multiply this one times that and then you're going to add then they came up with this one it's going to be a bit higher than the one that i came up with okay now the plan area is going to be that force here which is this amount here we divided by the bearing capacity they came up with this number uh so we need a square root of this number so we're going to say square root of um, 8 comma 7 equals okay let's see how far off i was it's 2.94 okay then they assumed a uh, three meter square which was nine which is exactly what i was assuming now we want to calculate uh, the self weight of the thing itself okay because now we we have an area okay now we want to calculate the the area that area we multiply it by the height which is in this case they assumed 0 0.6 0 0.6 then they came up with a number that was less than the original assumption which is okay now what they then did they calculated the total uh, uh, the total ultimate load okay by total ultimate load we are multiplying with the partial safety factor in this case uh, the load as you as you can see here we they added this one and came up with this which is one uh, one one five zero that's what i got i'm going to multiply it with, since it's the dead load by 1.4 then i'm going to add down uh, 1.6 multiplied by 300 which is the life load then i'm going to come with 20 2090 okay let me see now if we have 2090 here uh then they came up with this number okay so the number that i came up with is the force which is this one 2019 let me just stick to my my guns here it's 2090 we will come up with the very same thing at the end of the day then we divide it by the area which is about nine meters then we are going to come up with the with the bearing capacity of uh two two three two comma two kilonewtons per square meter okay so now if we want to calculate the maximum moment at the face of this column here what we need to do is we need to take this as the point where uh, moments are going to be this is the fulcrum or the pivot okay so this pressure which is this one in this case multiplied by this force let me just do this i said 20 Point two, okay, which was the force. We are going to multiply it by the distance, which is one point three, okay. Then we are going to multiply it by the by this distance. Uh, we came up with the with the with the total load. Then we are going to multiply it by this distance divided by by two, which is half that distance where it's acting, okay. So we want to come up with them. Um, the moment that is why we have ps which is this first value then we've got l which is 1.3 squared that's 1.3 times 1.3 divided by 2 this is the formula that i was just driving out for you it's going to give us a pressure of 196.2 kilonewtons that is the moment that the slab is going to suffer from okay from that we are going to remove the concrete cover and one and the center or the reinforcement of one bar here which is going to be 600 minus 50 which is the concrete cover uh, if you remember there's a table actually that talks about the kind of concrete covers that we can have in the case that the thing is um, subject is, is affected by corrosion we have to use uh, the worst case scenario which is about 50 or 40 depending with the grade of concrete so in this case they decided to use 50 so we're going to do that and we're assuming that these bars are going to be 20 millimeters so if we subtract 20 will be right at the middle there then we came up with this value okay from that point now we are going to calculate the maximum moment that this thing can carry okay this is the moment that we we have so the moment that you calculate from this point as you can see this is the the number that you came out they came up with it's far far bigger 
than this moment here. So the reinforcement is enough. Okay. But the biggest problem now is not the moment. Let me just finish up. Once you have that value, you calculate uh, the K value, which is the moment divided by FCU times BD, you come up with this value. Then you use that value to calculate the Z value, which is the liver arm. Now, before you co you continue here, you need to check that before you multiply with the D value that this number, uh, the number that is uh, multiplied by the D is less than 0 0.95 D. If it exceeds, in this case it exceeds, you will be forced to stick to this value. You multiply this value with the D, then you come up with the maximum lever arm, which is this much. Okay. Now, they used that one to calculate uh, the area of steel. Moment divided by 0. Now it's 0. 0.95 FYZ, which is uh, you multiply with this one, the FY is the strength of steel. You come up with an area of steel here per meter. Since this is being calculated per meter, you check if it is a uh, you check for the minimum area of steel, which is this one. So this is valid, it's a valid thing. Okay, you check from your tables, you find out that this is a uh, uh, two 20 millimeter bars, like they are assumed at. 300 millimeter spacing will give you this much reinforcement which is greater than this number here now once that has been done you need to calculate uh i think i'm going to end here let me just end here then maybe tomorrow we'll talk about the sheet thank you for your time